What's going on guys and finally the Wenger Ball Tactic is here and trust me you want to give it a shot. If you do enjoy the tactics on this channel be sure to leave a like, drop a little subscription but let's get into the testing phase and see how good this really is. So we're going to kick things off with the current Arsenal team and we had an unforgettable season. We won the quadruple, we won the Europa League against Sporting, we won the Premier League against everyone. We won the FA Cup against Liverpool and the Carabao Cup against Norwich City. In terms of the league table, it was absolute dominance. 108 goal difference, 108 points back to back. We love to see that. Man City, no competition for us at all with this tactic. We scored 123 league goals, conceded only 15 and picked up zero red cards despite having 94 yellows. In terms of the team stats, we absolutely thumped in six of these stat lines. Most points per game at 2.84. Most goals at 123, most shots at 873, fewer shots against coming in at 276, fewest conceded coming in at 15, and the most clean sheets coming in at 27. A real masterpiece of a tactic that dominated everywhere it went. In terms of the data help, we are going to be looking at 3.24 goals per game, a conceded at 0.39, and a pass completion of 87.31. While doing this, also managing nearly 23 shots per game so absolutely sensational stuff coming out of us there in terms of the squad we are going to be looking at a very impressive 70 goals from gabriel jesus who is playing a mixture of roles within the team 42 for Bakayo Saka, Martinelli with 38, 28 for Odegaard. We're also going to have Xhaka with 9, 7 for Salabia, Jorginho with 7, 6 from Nketiah and 5 for Smith Rowe. In terms of the assists, we're going to be looking at 39 for Bakayo Saka, 35 for Odegaard, Martinelli for 23, 15 for Xhaka, Ben White with 11, 9 for Smith Rowe, Thomas Partey with 8, a for Tomiyasu and Jesus also with eight. Also Vieira and Zinchenko contributing quite highly. So a very good season for absolutely everybody within this system. It links up the attack so well. Everyone gets involved. The fullbacks get involved. And it's a really good, solid 4-2-3-1 option. So I would recommend you give it a whirl if you can. It suits your team because trust me, it's definitely worth it. But going over to the actual schedule, this is where things took a real impressive turn as we actually didn't lose a game across the entire season. Now, there were some disappointing results. Let's just be realistic. Um, the likes of, you know, a draw to Fulham isn't the best of the best. So it's no mean completely flawless, this tactic, but it is still technically invincible. Um, and the idea was to go invincible in the Premier League, but we actually went invincible across the entire save, which I have done on about three occasions with a lot better teams than Arsenal. So I was a bit surprised. Um, I can't, don't get me wrong. A lot of these games were quite close. Like this one though here could have gone either way. We, I mean, we won it in the second minute. That does show how good the defensive variant is. So that is something at least. Um, a 2-0 win here, 3-0, 4-1, 2-0, 5-0, we battered these, to be honest, 7-0 and 3-0. A 2-2 draw here against Leeds. Um, a 1-1 against Chelsea, which this is this shows this shows what it can be like, man. We literally saved this invincible spree by a Bakayo Saka 92nd minute equaliser. I don't know what the Leeds was like. Um, yeah, we were ahead in that. But this one here, that shows how quickly things could change. We then go on a ridiculous spree of literally not even drawing a game. All the way down here up until Feyenoord, where as you can see, we drew 1-1, one, one, um, which again, we were lucky they didn't go ahead and get another goal there, as we only get a goal in the 28th minute. A nil-nil here against Ajax, so there are some draws in there, don't get me wrong. It's not completely flawless, but still, I think you know how good a tactic is when you're doing that. I would then go over and just for fun, we decided to test with the 98 database Arsenal team and we didn't do as well. Still had quite a good season in the Premier League. Only four points off winning it from Manchester United. Obviously that classic rivalry back in the day. The FA Cup winners against Liverpool and the Charity Shield against Manchester United as well. Runners up in the Coca-Cola Cup against Liverpool and lost in the quarterfinals against a very strong Juve side. However, we did score more goals over in this division, um, more per game anyway, at 135 in the league, 26 conceded, a few more red cards, so a little bit of a discipline issue with some of these players. In terms of the team stats, so we are going to be looking at 135 goals, 868 shots, um, most shots for that is, fewer shots against at 240, fewest conceded at 26, and also the most clean sheets coming in at 20. In terms of the data hub, we are going to be looking at a staggering 3.55 goals per game, 
0.68 conceded per game, over 22, nearly 23 shots per game, a pass completion of 87.78, and a tackle win ratio of 74%. So, to be fair, not as good as the current Arsenal team, but still quite to a high standard. And the first game we're going to watch is going to be from the 98 database in what is a 7-0 win at home in the Premier League against Everton, as it's going to be Overmars into Camp. Bit of a deflection is going to be Lundberg who does finish it off in a very good area of space on that right hand side. It's going to be Winterburn inside now, cutting it back into Vieira, the star man in midfield. And he's going to cut it back, drive it inside into Platt. Great little first touch and an even better finish. A touch, pause, engage moment from Platt. And we're going to be 2 0 up inside of 11 minutes. The third goal comes shortly after. Overmars into Burkamp. Going to take his time here, driving at that back line. Keeps on going, keeps on going, smashes it into the top right corner. No question where that's going. Absolute rocket from Burkamp as Platt plays it back into Bald now. Into Vieira, takes his time. A direct approach over the top. It's a Nicholas Anelka who touches it down and he's going to go past the keeper slightly. Makes his mind up for him, the keeper there. And it's going to be an easy finish into the right-hand side. A great goal and one of many goals of this game as we win a very dodgy throw in there as Lundberg picks up and hits it off the line and... That's a mixture of confidence, a great goal, and a dodgy match engine. As the keeper should not be letting that in on any means of the imagination. As we are going to get another sort of scrappy goal there. It's going to be a set piece that sort of just got re-put into a dodgy area. And we're going to take the goal with no questions asked. A more direct approach here into Anelka. Couple of touches, a good clearance, but goes to no one. And again, a mixture of a great goal and a dodgy match engine. As Hughes finishes off a dominant 7-0 win, where we nearly had 70% of the ball. Can't forget about a couple of cup finals we won with Arsenal in the main team as Ben White goes down the right hand side into Martin Odegaard. Touch, pause, engage into Shaka and that is going to be a rocket down the middle. A lot of power though against Sporting inside of a minute basically. Not the great start from them as now they're literally on the edge. No confidence as Diamande just logs off his PC and Vieira wins the ball back into Jesus. A great touch and an even better finish into the left hand corner. Some questionable moments through this game I must say. Thomas Partey into Salah a ball back out wide into the center, into Xhaka, into Odegaard, into Kieran Tierney. A great touch. Oh, if he would have hit that first time, it would have been magical. But still a goal to come, and Martinelli tucks it away. The FA Cup final up next did a 2 0 win against a 10 men Liverpool side. As this great play down the right hand side, utilizing every single player through to Ben White, Shocker Marken, and Odegaard gets his goal inside of the 59th minute. A very dead first half, but obviously a more lively second half here. As Martinelli threads it through into Odegaard, is he going to cut it back? I believe he is. He's got a colour back into Marseille, a little touch and an even better finish in a very comfortable 2-0 win. And that leaves us with one more thing to do, and that is to break down the tactic for you guys. If you are enjoying today's video, please do leave a like, drop a little subscription to the channel and turn on that notification bell so you never miss another upload. But let's go ahead and break down Wenger Ball's 4-2-3-1. So this is going to be the Wenger Ball 4 2 3 one And as always, we have got three variants. And I want to thank all of the names coming down the screen right now. They're going to be existing or new Patreon members. You can check out in the description how to join and also the cool perks you get. But a little heads up, you pretty much get access to all three of the tactic files early video and tactic release you get priority in your tactic and rebuild requests one-on-one -on -one help with your tactics and fm needs and also access to exclusive giveaways that are going to include a couple of copies of the next fm football shirts and probably much more we're constantly finding new things to offer for you guys here but let's go ahead and break down the first variant which is going to be the sort of one you're going to go into the games with and the main one that gets tested with so it is going to be based around a positive mentality um in terms of the in possession tab we're going to go right into it fairly wide on the whip slightly shorter on the passing directness while staying playing out someone say staying out playing out off the fence a higher tempo is also going to be selected work ball into the box low crosses is also going to be selected and also be more expressive on the creative freedom tab so again it's not a tiki taka tactic by any means of the imagination neither is a lump ball tactic it is in my opinion a nice mixture of the middle so in my opinion it's just a really nice balanced 4 2 3 1 that can cause a lot of issues and play in several different sort of elements of the game. It can go short or also can go long. It's not based off one thing, which makes it so good. In transition, we've got counter press, distribute to the fullbacks and also the centre backs, and 
doing that, we're going to take short goal kicks. And in the out of possession tab, we are going to go ahead and we are actually going to have the standard line, a high press line of engagement, much more often on the trigger press and also get stuck in. Now, this is one which you can tweak because obviously get stuck in is great. It helped this formation out a lot. But if you are picking up too many bookends, that is one thing you would like to remove because that will fix majority of the issues. Going over to the actual player roles then, we're going to have a goalkeeper or a sweeper keeper, should I say, on support on the default instructions. We've got to have a wing back on the right on attack on stay wider and tackle harder. We've got to have a central defender on defend on tackle harder on the right hand side and exactly the same on the left. So to clarify, two central defenders both on defend and the only additional instruction being tackle harder. The left back, we have got a wing back on attack on tackle harder. So nice and simple. The two in midfield, we have got a ball winning midfielder on the left hand side on the default. So that basically just means tackle harder. And on the right hand side, we've got a deep line playmaker on support on tackle harder. So two very sort of defensive midfield players there, or take, like, I guess one really defensive one. One that does do defensive work, but obviously also does look to make progressive play through that midfield and get the counter attacks going. Now going over to the left hand side, we have got an advanced playmaker on support on sit narrower and also tackle harder. And on the right, we've got an inverted winger on support on sit narrower and also tackle harder. In the middle, we're going to go with a trek on attack on shoot less often. And to finish it off, we've got the pressing forward on attack on the default because it does exactly what we want it to do without adding any additional instructions. Now, going over to what is going to be the attack invariant, um, just so we can actually show you visually so you can see as well. Um, this is what the sort of normal one looks like. Going over to what is going to be the attack invariant, there are some changes. The main changes are going to be coming in from this area here. So the likes of the winger on the left-hand side is not going to be an advanced playmaker anymore. It's going to be an inside forward because, in my opinion, just from experience, they do typically get more goals playing in that role. So an inside forward on attack, on shoot more often, sit narrower, and also tackle harder. And also the inverted winger is also now going to be told to shoot more often. And that is going to be the two changes in the actual player roles. In terms of mentality, it gets up to one, to attacking. In position, we've got a fairly wide, Overlapping fullbacks on this occasion, getting everyone involved because we are desperately trying to chase down a game and grab a goal. A higher tempo, a standard directness still, still with work ball into the box. But on this occasion, we've got both be more expressive and also run at defense. In transition, we've got counter press, distribute quickly. At the end of the day, we're trying to get the game underway as quick as we can. And exactly the same for where we distribute to, be it the center backs and the fullbacks and still on take short goal kicks. And out of possession, we've remained still with the standard line, still with the high press line of engagement, much more often, and also get stuck in. If you're desperate, desperate, you could also rock a high line. Now, going over to the defensive variant, there are going to be significant changes, so be sure to pay attention to this one, as we are going to see right now. This is going to be the third variant. So... There's quite a bit of changes. The first one you've got to notice is that the two sort of midfield players actually drop a lot deeper. And that is because we're more of a defensive unit back there now. So the first change comes in. The wing backs are going to be on support, on stay wider and tackle harder. And on the left hand side, simply just on tackle harder as a wing back on support. We then opt for the two deeper midfielders, a DM on the left hand side, on defend, on tackle harder, and a deep line playmaker on support still still on tackle harder we then opt for having two advanced playmakers out wide and this is because we've gone down the approach of slowing the game down when we're on the ball passing it shorter maintaining possession controlling the game hence why i feel like these roles work slightly better um so that is why that is on so two advanced playmakers on pass it shorter and tackle harder and on this side again pass it shorter but also sit narrower and also tackle harder these two roles remain exactly the same the mentality stays the same as the default so back to positive in possession we're actually going to be seeing a fairly wide play out of defense shorter higher time waste and set to frequently work ball into the box and be more disciplined on obviously the creative freedom element in transition we've got counter press hold shape slow pace down we are trying to waste time we're not forcefully trying to engage any play distributing to the center backs and also the full backs still and out of possession we've got the standard line still the high press and line of engagement much more often and also get stuck in so that is going to be three fantastic variants 
of the Wenger Ball system, which I would highly recommend that you guys give it, give it a whirl, see how it goes. So let me know in the comments what you think of it as well. And while you're there, if you do like the videos on this channel, whether it be the tactics, the rebuilds, please do leave a like on it and please do consider, if you are a big fan of the content, subscribing to the channel and also hitting that notification bell because this way you're never going to miss another upload. And we are posting five videos a week, a nice mixture of rebuilds and tactics. So you don't want to miss any of that cool stuff. And I'll see you boys in the next video. Have a great weekend. That is everything.